give me a little Taylor Swift tea that the, the Swifties, you know, they're watching. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Swift tea. Tea. Damn. <laughs> Welcome to the Logo Spill Bar. I'm your bartender and host, Johnny Sibley, and today I'm joined by model, actor, singer, trans activist, and most recently, Taylor Swift's hunky Lavender Hayes love interest, my baby, Laith Ashley. Hello. Hi, I was just about to close up. Okay, he got money. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're parched, darling, because it's time to spill. <laughs> And, and cheers. cheers. Oh. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. As I spill it all over myself. <laughs> right. You ain't having a good time unless you're spilling a little bit on yourself. You I know? mean, we're spilling tea, so I guess that's Ooh, appropriate, right? Look at that. I love a good mm, little button. Well, I want to say before we get started, I was out the other night, you know, feeling myself. Someone came up to me like, oh my God, I love you. You're so great. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. And they were like, Laith, right? And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, no. But I love that you feel like that. <laughs> I take the compliment I mean, as well. Oh, I'm do like, you? Okay, yeah. I was gonna say, so how do you feel about that? Because if I was like, hey, twin. I love your face. So, yes. <laughs> I love your face. You know, I always, I always comment on Instagram, like, oh my God, face and this jawline, I wish. <laughs> please. Oh, please. <laughs> All right. Well, we're both hot, I guess. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of hot, yeah. oh, Taylor Swift, <laughs> Lavender Haze, you were Video Bay. Yeah. Please tell me. How did that come about? Honestly, my manager reached out to me and told me about the opportunity. Yeah. He told me that her team had reached out directly asking for me to be in the video. Okay, directly. <laughs> yeah. No audition necessary, um, baby. <laughs> I was just like, who? <laughs> Taylor Swift asked for me? Yeah. Are you, you're kidding, right? I, I was just like, you're absolutely lying. Mm -hmm. This is like, you're pranking me. Like this, it was, to me, it was the most random thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't understand. And he was like, no, I'm serious. Like, they want you to be in her upcoming music video. So I, like, immediately got on my phone and started looking for the Swifties to see <laughs> what they were saying, if there was something going on. And I, I mean, I, I was aware that she was re-recording mm -hmm. her past albums because yeah. of issues that she was having with, I think, I guess, the ownership or rights to some of her music. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I would be maybe a love interest in uh, one of those songs. Oh, like old, Yeah, because I didn't know, I didn't learn that she was coming out with a new album or that she was even working on a new album until like September. And we shot the video in August. Okay. Yeah. How did it feel like to be on set? Like, were you <laughs> nervous? Were oh, you... hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I walked on set, they were already shooting one of the scenes with her okay. and she was alone in, in the bed. Yeah. And she was in the, you know, the t-shirt, the messy hair, like yeah. looking like she just woke up. And I was just like, oh, holy shit, this Taylor Swift is right there. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> so do you just like, you get you get there and you just jump into bed with her? Uh, no, so they, they were filming uh, a few things before I got there already. So they just introduced me while they were shooting that uh, scene. Okay. And then took me back to She to wasn't already room. like laying no, down. No, like, <laughs> no, Hi, how are you? Not yet, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. So how is Taylor Swift in bed? <laughs> <laughs> I should have kissed her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you know, no. like, it, because you are nervous, yeah, yeah. she probably knows that. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, do you guys chit chat? Do you have a little mm -hmm. small talk? Like, yeah, so before, so before like action, uh, she laid up and she, she was, we were laying in, lying in bed next to each other and she showed me the monitor and she went over um, everything that we were gonna do, what the purpose of the scene was. Mm. And for the most part, I was asleep. I was literally on my on my side asleep. I was yeah. like that for did like six hours. Did she direct it? Yeah, she was the direct, director of the video too. Work. She did it. She did <laughs> it all. She does it all. She's like, so here's yeah. what's gonna happen. I mm -hmm. love that. So this is what we're gonna do here. Um, uh, she explained to me that I wouldn't be hearing the music. Mm. Um, and I guess I learned later that that's just a common thing that she does. So she had an earwig. Only she can hear the music. Oh. So it was quiet. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So people were like, oh, what song is it? What song? I'm like, I have no oh, idea. Oh, because, you know, <laughs> yeah. and she hadn't, leaks and things. Right. She hadn't come out with the uh, song list yet because she started doing that on TikTok, like right before the album yes. release. She was like, okay, I'm, I'm releasing this album. And she was doing it. I think it was like Midnight Mayhem mm -hmm. this, with the balls. And this song is going to be called this. Yeah. And I had no idea. Oh, my God. <laughs> they took our phones. They took it. No, we couldn't have anything. Well, yeah, because yeah. there's Swifties everywhere. Yeah. I mean, there's probably some Swifties in here. Yeah, I try to explain to them. I'm like, 
the Swifties aren't checking for me. They have no idea who I am. So, but uh, they were like, I don't care. They didn't I don't care. know about all that, lady. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if she knew who you were, yeah. the Swifties probably definitely know who you are. Did you, <laughs> are, would you say that you were a Swiftie before or were you more like, you know? I enjoyed her music. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I, I like okay, the so, like, so I, <laughs> I've been asked that before, so I always, I'm, I'm just like, a mask, I'm not a Swifty. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. What, do you, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I do, I, I love her music. I, I did, my favorite album was 1989. Mm -hmm. um, so and she's wanted to make her videos more diverse and she's used mm -hmm. folks of different backgrounds. Uh, it's just, I think it's beautiful to watch it. Her videos are always super colorful, yeah. very, one entertaining yeah. and really just just fun. And she was really fun to to work with. So I I yeah, was really speaking of that, like give me a little Taylor Swift tea that the the Swifties, you know, they're watching oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> some behind the scenes, something that the fans might be like, oh, I love that, or you know, ooh. her hair smelled really good. It smelled like roses. I was just like, and we were all really close. So I was just like trying to be. Professional. I was gonna ask you what she smelled like. Yeah. I was like, maybe that's creepy, but no. she smells like roses. Yeah. I love that. Let's get into modeling. Yep. So what is it like, how does it feel to be one of the first out trans men to really break down those doors yeah. of like, we're here and we're amazing? Bitch, we still breaking down them doors. So yeah, I'm just like, true. let me in. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically, it kind of feels like that sometimes. Yeah. Because uh, I'm as grateful as I am for the doors that have opened for me mm -hmm. or um, the opportunities that I've received. Yeah. It feels like I'm constantly have having to to push yeah. to say, hey, I'm here and I've been here. Right. I'm just like, I can't keep this body up for any much longer. <laughs> I'm tired, y'all. Like, it's there. I want to eat like cake and donuts and things. <laughs> is there like, no. you know, over the years, is there like a, a brand campaign or like a company that you've worked with that you were like, I loved that, mm -hmm. that brand and that company? Because there have been a few. Uh, Abercrombie. Really? Yeah. They made an effort to change and, and diversify. Mm -hmm. And when they reached out to me, one, they came, the price was was right. right. The coin <laughs> so was I was there. just like, wow. I didn't have to negotiate or anything. Uh -huh. It just came at a, at a higher rate than I had ever asked for even prior to that. Right. So it basically, I was just like, okay, now that's my starting that, rate. That's yeah. the new rate. So that was good. And then uh, everyone that was on set was super, just so cool, really excited to, to work with me. And I was just, I was very surprised. I, I feel like up until that point, I don't re recall ever having that experience. I know that the Diesel campaign that I worked uh, on, which is one of my first big campaigns with David LaChapelle, mm -hmm. was really, really cool. But Diesel, mm. they didn't use my, they used one photo mm -hmm. um, on their Instagram page mm -hmm. and they received just one comment that was transphobic. And it wasn't even, it wasn't crazy. They were just like, oh, that's not a man, that's a woman. And they, they took the whole post down. It's almost like they couldn't handle it. They could have deleted mm -hmm. or blocked that person, right. left the comment there for, other people that knew of me to go and you know take handle that, yeah. and they just took the entire post down. They never posted me on their page, so I was disappointed yeah. with, with that. Did they ever apologize for that, or no? No. no. Well, <laughs> I, and that was a while ago, right? That so was like, 2016. How do you feel like that would happen if if that <laughs> were to happen now? How yeah. do you think a, a, a brand would respond? I think it depends on the brand. Mm. I think uh, I mean there's more of a conversation. I think there's more of of, of a push now. Mm -hmm. um, but even still, I, I mean, trans, trans guys haven't really, it's, I hate to say this because I know I'm like, I, I'm always afraid to get canceled with certain things because of my appearance, because I'm, I'm perceived as hyper masculine yeah. and I'm, I have uh, male privilege and my, like, I'm super passing or whatever. Uh -huh. you, there's this idea that I just, I have it made. Yeah. And what I've noticed as far as inclusivity in, in media, mm -hmm. as far as, Trans, spe trans people specifically, mm -hmm. trans men are still almost not to be seen. It's right. like me, um, there's Marquise Wilson mm -hmm. and uh, Brian Michael Smith. Right. And there's, they, there may be a, a, a few others, but they're rarely talked about. Right. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about that because you've been on shows like Noah's Ark and Pose yeah. and yeah. like, you know, you and you know, I, we talk about auditions and mm -hmm. stuff like that all the time. 
what do you feel like they're lacking, yeah. like in when it comes to representing yeah. trans trans men and trans masculine people? I think there's still there isn't there's not much understanding. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, sometimes I'll get uh, my agent will send me some sides, and and you'll see the description of the character. If it's a trans if it's trans specific, they'll group trans men, trans women, and non-binary people all in one. Mm, um, I they'll have seen use that. they'll use like he for trans women, mm -hmm. she for trans men. It's like they don't, that the language isn't necessarily there. I remember auditioning for a part, I can't remember what it was at, at but there were, there were like high femme trans women mm -hmm. auditioning for the same part that I was auditioning for. And I was just like, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like what is it that you want exactly? What, are, what is it that you're looking for? Yeah. Um, and I find that when it comes to even playing love interests, they're not completely comfortable with, like for example, a trans woman dating a cis guy mm -hmm. they kind of usually either dating someone queer mm -hmm. or they make her a lesbian I'm which a is female. which is real it exists, it exists yeah, but, but there's there's but no, it really doesn't yeah. sh it, it doesn't challenge the conversation right. that cis heterosexual people are attracted to, to trans, trans people. people right and it's, it's just the same is, thing for you know? yeah. for trans men so for me usually uh what i've seen what i've auditioned for at least it's always if it's a trans masculine role mm -hmm. and there is a lo like some love that's sparked that's involved, it's gay. Yeah. Um, which is real, yeah. but like, it's never a, it's never a cis straight woman. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the only time I've seen it was just now <laughs> with with Taylor. So if you were to say like, one, you know, I mean, actually, you know what? It's not your job to tell yeah. them that they need to get it together. Yeah, just get it. The <laughs> Together. Also hire me. Thanks. Yeah. It's, uh, speaking of hiring nah. you, um, are there any roles that you've seen, you know, trans or otherwise, that you've auditioned for that you're like, because there's so many I've auditioned oh, for. Yeah. I'm like, damn, I wanted to play. Oh, but. I mean, there was this. It's it was a, a this movie on on Netflix called Night Teeth, mm -hmm. which I thought was like, you know, it was it was campy, but it was cool, and it was playing vampires. I was like, this is fire, and I auditioned <laughs> to play the lead's older brother. Mm -hmm. This is another issue that I have too. The lead is Dominican. Mm -hmm. The older brother ended up being a Mexican mm. uh, American. Like they look nothing alike. Uh -huh. The Spanish that they spoke was completely different. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, they're not brothers. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Dominican. <laughs> Dominican. Hey. Write it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's no mystery that you are a sex icon in my opinion. <laughs> but you talked about being asexual. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Tell me more. Wait, wait, more about that. <laughs> so I, can, I mean, I've, before I started my transition, I dated women. I guess I, I identified, I didn't necessarily identify as a lesbian uh -huh. prior to my transi transition. I didn't like, I just didn't like the word. And right. I kind of, this, and I was 16 at the time mm -hmm. um, when I when I did came, when I did come out. So I preferred the word. I just preferred gay. Yeah. And I tried to think about why it made me so uncomfortable to say lesbian. And, and I asked my other friends that were in the community that were queer, mm -hmm. mostly who identified as lesbian, how they felt about themselves, about their body, their identities. And that's where I kind of realized that there was some sort of a difference mm -hmm. and it but it wasn't until I got to college where I was just like where I started doing research on on my own I went on YouTube mm -hmm. trying to find answers and I somehow came across a trans guy that was documenting his entire transition on YouTube mm -hmm. and I was just like that's me I think as far as my sexuality it's still I'm still learning and discovering things about myself mm -hmm. I think that growing up in a very conservative household where you're taught that as someone that's assigned female at birth you're supposed to stay a virgin until marriage, and anyone that, if you kind of divert from that, yeah. you're a nasty little whore. <laughs> <laughs> and, right? <laughs> but it's just like there's so much shame, there was so much shame around that. So I still, there's still some of that that I carry. Like there's some shame around my body, mm -hmm. there's shame around sex and sexuality. I think that when I was, when I was dating, a lot of those encounters were, it was more of an ego thing, mm -hmm. I, or I had something to prove. Like I can, I am more than capable of, of pleasing my partner. Yeah. So it was more about that than us actually being in, our, in the relationship. Right. Um, I'm not interested in, in dating or anything. I'm just like, let's yeah. go with the career. Uh -huh. if, if I find someone that I'm attracted to and want to go there, maybe we'll explore that when that happens. But yeah. at this point, no. Yeah, because I mean, as queer people, we're, there's not really a lot of models of how to have a <clears throat> relationship, not yeah. only with self, but with other people. Yeah. So <laughs> you say career is top priority right now. Are yeah. you? Are you interested in dating? Like if, 
you know, some someone came along and, you know, just swept you off your feet or you swept them off their feet? No. <laughs> like, when you walk into yeah. a room, like, I always think, I always say I'm not interested in dating yeah. too. But I still walk into a room and I'm like, hmm, what's going on? Like, you yeah. know, do you have that? I'm just like, how am I making money? <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. That's pretty much what it is. I mean, I think, I know that I, I always say, like, I sell sex, but I don't do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And that's, I feel like that's one of the things people always wonder, like, yeah. you know, about being asexual and, like, not having a driving interest for sex. Yeah. Uh, but still also yeah. being sexy and, like, enjoying yeah. that part. Like, is there a myth that you think is out there that you would debunk, like, we can be all things or? I mean, I, I think that... I feel like we've gotten to a point where things, we obviously know that things aren't black and white. Mm -hmm. And even if I'm, if for someone that identifies as asexual, there's still, even that's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not, that doesn't mean that I'm like, oh, no sex ever, it's right, totally no, gross, or like, don't yeah. touch me. Sometimes, yes, <laughs> but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes no. Don't touch me. Let me. You know, it really, it really, you, yeah. it really de it depends on, on my mood. I'm also a cancer, I'm moody as mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. if I am, if I wake up on the wrong side of the bed, like every get out of my way. <laughs> oh. I mean, you're well, always I try to be nice kind. To me. Yeah, Cl right. No, kindness I, and right. niceness. Is well, that's why I stay at home because so no one has to see the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> and that's I keep it, you yeah, know, yeah. away. You joke on TikTok about you know receiving horny DMs <laughs> all what, the time. What does that feel like? Because you know sometimes, sometimes I'm like mm -hmm. when I get them, I'm like. You really went there? Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, you really went there. Yeah. You know what I mean? How do you feel? It depends on what's said. So if, it, if it's like fetishy, <laughs> yeah. then I'm like, uh, block. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Intent is important. And yeah. if I, or if I perceive or if I interpret what you're saying as, in, like it's not, they're not trying to be an asshole or mm -hmm. they're just genuinely curious, then I usually answer the question. But when it's coming from a place of like, okay, I want to get this information so I can use it against this person and the, their community, mm. then I'm just like, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, do people send like unsolicited photos? Oh yeah, like... I've gotten whole pics, like <laughs> all the things. I've gotten like, even, I, I, this was what surprised me. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gotten photos of uh, women like, spready. spready. Yeah, yeah, I was just like, wow. So everybody's just selling, <laughs> selling, sending whole pigs. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> All the holes. All the holes. Aside of like uh, work and stuff like that, like what's one thing that when no one's around, like that you love about you? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I love to learn, mm -hmm. and I love that I love to learn. Yeah. I think that uh, as long as we're br living, breathing, it's important to keep learning. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I feel like you stay stagnant and, and you don't grow. I love being very physical, yeah. so that's why I like going to, to the gym and doing all these different sports. I think one thing that I've always wanted to do that I've been afraid to do as I've gotten older and I keep holding myself back from mm -hmm. was learning to tumble like somersaults oh. and things like that. Yeah. So actually next week, if my knees are okay, <laughs> I was gonna go to jam and like try to learn how to do a backflip and see what, what yeah. happens there. Well, better yeah. now than later. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say you're goofy? Oh, I'm a goofy nerd, yeah. <laughs> I feel like, I, honestly, even hearing my voice sometimes, I'm just like, sound cool, Dave. Why do you sound like a... <laughs> What's so funny it? is that whenever, I, whenever I'm with you, like you are, so handsome and so like you feel I feel like a lot of people would look at you and be like oh gosh I'm so scared yeah. <laughs> you are so easy going and chill yeah I appreciate that where Thank does you. that come from I think we're all just people I think honestly <laughs> if anyone's like out here like yeah I'm so fun and sexy you don't have to talk like that's a whole act I'm yeah. like get out of here you're just, like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well cheers Yo, to being cheers. regular people be right be real <laughs>